The Fishing News is brought to you by Shoreline Insurance Agency. Win the incredible Steigercraft, Evinrude, Rude, Lorance Grand Prize Boat Package, and more in the Fisherman's 2018 Dream Boat Fishing Challenge. Get the details at thefisherman.com. The June issue of The Fisherman is out now on newsstands or headed to your mailbox. Tim C. Smith here for The Fisherman's video fishing forecast, and it looks like another stretch of unsettled weather going into the weekend. And to make things worse, it's going to blow from the east on Sunday. So there's pretty much nowhere to hide and to get out of the wind. So it looks like Saturday is your best bet. But keep an eye out for thunderstorms. And due to Sunday's weather forecast, the Suffolk Marine Anglers Tournament may be postponed until Sunday, June 10th. The final decision will be made at the captain's meeting tonight at 7.30 at Miller's Ale House in Deer Park. Be there. Even if you don't fish the tournament, this is a great captain's meeting with an amazing amount of great prizes and a Chinese auction. For more information, go to SuffolkMarineAnglers.com. Lots of choices if you're headed out east this weekend. Montauk Rips have come alive with bass and blues. There's a solid run of fluke underway too, including lots of quality fish. The Lazy Bones had fish to nearly 12 pounds. Peconic Bay has blues, bass, porgies, and sea bass keeping rods bent. Don't forget, sea bass season is closed until last year's regs take effect, which is June 27th, or until the new regulations are announced. Some really nice fluke are coming off green lawns. Check out this 11.45 pound doormat weighed in at Wego Bait and Tackle last weekend. On the North Fork, Eric Simmons and his wife, Michelle, fished out of Mattituck on Saturday and bailed a load of fluke and stripers to 20 pounds on bucktails. They reported nonstop action for nearly four hours. On the South Shore, fluking remains pretty solid with the best action still being found inside the bays and the percentage of keepers continue to be better than the past few seasons. Rich at Dick's Bait and Tackle in Mastic Beach reported good numbers of keepers to 26 inches mixed with shorts coming from the narrows on spearing and squid combos. Kurt at Willie Kays in Bayshore weighed in a 9.5 pounder for Todd Stubman from Fire Island Inlet, and Greg at Burnett's Bait and Tackle and Marina in Bayshore weighed a weak fish to over 9 pounds this week. The east-west channel off of Copeg has some nice fluke as well. Here is Rene LaRocco with a 20-incher caught on a live killie. Let's check in now with Captain Al Lorenzetti and hear what he has to report from the south shore. Hey, Tim. Things are picking up pretty good around Fire Island. Uh, a lot of big bluefish still around, which is great action. I mean, have, I had fish up to like 15 pounds, uh, so that's a lot of fun. Some bigger bass starting to show up, uh, a bunch of keepers, uh, a couple of fish in the 30s, but most of the bass action is to the west uh, in the ocean. And uh, decent weak fish bite, West Channel, Ocean Beach, Point of Woods. Fluke fishing is holding up well inside the western bays with fish to 7 pounds and a good percentage of keepers as well. According to Bill Witchy at Combs Bait and Tackle in Amityville, positive reports came from the 3rd Wontor Bridge to the Jones Beach Piers. He's reminded us it's not too early to sign up for the Duke of Fluke tournament taking place on June 24th. Sign-ups begin this Friday at 3 p.m. and they will remain open until 8 p.m. that night. Jerry at Bernie's Bait and Tackle in Sheepshead Bay reported some good fluke scores from inside the Jamaica Bay, including a limit of flatties from four to six pounds from one of his shop customers. Mark Keller at Bay Park Fishing Station in Oceanside has been weighing in lots of stripers from 25 to 40 pounds, taken on Mojo's and Bunker Spoons west of Jones and Deb's Inlet. Blues from three to 12 pounds still being found in good numbers deep in the bays. The Western Sound is seeing more big stripers dropping down from the Hudson River with fish being taken on bunker chunks and trolled mojo rigs. Jacks, bait and tackle, and City Island weighed fish to 42 pounds trolled near the Throgs Neck Bridge over the weekend. Blaze at Duffy's Bait and Tackle in Glenwood Landing has been weighing in quite a few bass into the 30 pound class with most falling to bunker chunks. Porgy action is very good from one end of the sound to the other end and the number of keeper fluke continues to build with fish to six pounds reported from the Huntington area. A couple of eight plus pounders were decked on the James Joseph where white bucktails have been doing a nice job on the fish. Now let's check in with Hawaiian Dan from his kayak. Thanks, Tim. As you can see, I'm out in the water as always. Today, scouting around on my pedal drive, checking out the local spots. As you can see from the previous clips, nothing but sea robins, sea robins, sea robins. Can't say I haven't been able to bend a rod though. With some porgy, flute, and schooly striped bass in the middle. 
I do see a lot of bait fish in the harbor. Looks like shad jumping around. Water's still pretty cool. I'm waiting to get 55 and above sustaining. I think that's when the bite's gonna turn on. I'm sticking to my gun saying June's really what's gonna kick off. Until next time, I'll keep on scouting and report what I find. You can still paint the surf scene blue along most of the South Shore and South Fork with very good action being found inside the inlets and along the bay shorelines. Top water plugs are the most fun, but either way, replace those trebles with either single hooks or be sure to crush down your barbs. If you're using tins, go with a single hook. Dennis Bravo hit demo from 6 a.m. to 8 a.m. on Tuesday morning and beached a dozen blues to 10 pounds on tins. Striper action continues to be dominated by small fish, but there are increasing numbers of fish into the teens and 20 pound class. Places like Mariches and Shinnecock Inlets and along the Peconic Bay shoreline would be a good bet. Montauk is seeing good numbers of mostly small fish with some blues, but there has been talk of a couple quality fish coming from the south side. The last few years have seen the waters around Long Island and the New York Bight harboring huge numbers of bunker, and their presence has led to some excellent fishing, especially for large striped bass. But that important forage supply may be facing an old threat. For more on that, let's go to Fisherman Senior Editor, Fred Galafaro. Hey Tim, and yes, we have been blessed with an abundance of Menhaden, aka Bunker, in recent years. We all know how critical they are as a forage species to nearly all of our popular sport fish. From little peanuts to uh, full-grown adults, striped bass, bluefish, weakfish, fluke, uh, mako sharks, all sharks for that matter. Uh, look at all the fresher sharks now in tight along the beaches, and that's a direct result of having all these bunker schools along the beach. Um, tuna, love them, mahi, love them. Uh, just a very key forage species for all these game fish. And that abundance of bunker and an increase in New York's allocation this year is drawing a lot of attention from large-scale purse operations, the same ones that once devastated the Menhaden fishery around here. Uh, if you want to continue to have a chance at catching striped bass like the 50-pounder here, it was just caught last week out of Deb's Inlet on the bunker schools. Uh, we need to keep Persanus out of New York waters, and we have an opportunity to do that. Uh, you know, with their spotter planes and their ability to wipe out huge schools of bunker in one set, it's critical that a bill currently in the Senate and Assembly be passed before the uh, close of the current legislative session. Uh, with just a couple of weeks left, uh, it's really important now that you contact your local state center and assemblyman, ASAP, and ask them to support these bills and also encourage them to get passage in both houses before the end of the legislative session. So hop on it, get to it, don't let time go by, and let's see if we can uh, avoid having these persanas back in our home waters. Thanks to Red Volt Productions for that amazing drone footage, and check out the link below for the full video. To find your representative and his or hers contact information, go to the link below. Remember, like our video, subscribe to our YouTube page, and be a subscriber to the Fisherman Magazine to be part of the Dreamboat Contest. Until next week, this is Tim C. Smith for thefisherman.com. Win the incredible Steigercraft, Evinrude, Lowrance Grand Prize Boat Package, and more in the Fisherman's 2018 Dreamboat Fishing Challenge. Get the details at thefisherman.com.